for testing Packers QB just got kissed with nasty karma after refusing NFL commissioner's rule. The national anthem protests in the NFL seem to be diminishing, but not entirely gone after NFL commissioner Roger Goodell stated that players should stand for the anthem. While some players in the NFL have begun to backpedal on their social warrior stance during work hours, others have not. One of those players is Green Bay Packers quarterback Aaron Rodgers who appears to be the latest victim of the NFL protest curse. A few weeks ago, President Trump waded into the protest fray by stating that NFL team owners should bench or fire players who did not stand for the anthem. Instead of these arrogant NFL players taking a step back and eating a piece of humble pie, they only up their protests on the field. That particular week, hundreds of players either knelt on the ground, linked arms or cowardly hid in their locker rooms while the anthem played. However, quarterback Aaron Rodgers took it one step too far by demanding fans to link arms in the stands at a Thursday night game at Lambeau Field three weeks ago. The Green Bay fans were a bit perplexed by the multimillionaire activist's order and refused to follow Rodgers' directive. After the game in an interview, Rodgers was so miffed by the fans choosing not to give in to his outrageous stipulation that he dissolved into a temper tantrum on air. Rodgers blamed President Trump for the fans' underwhelming response, and then it only got worse from there. Shannon Sharp, a Fox News sports anchor, went one step further by claiming that the Green Bay fans were racist since they did not follow Rodgers' command. So, that is why what happened this weekend to Aaron Rodgers appears to be sweet poetic justice. On Sunday afternoon, during a game against the Minnesota Vikings, Aaron Rodgers was injured and reportedly has broken his collarbone. And here is where the entire situation begins to get a tad sticky. You see, now that Aaron Rodgers is out potentially for the rest of the season with this injury that opens up a quarterback slot. So, that means it is within the realm of possibility that Colin Kaepernick could be called to fill the open slot. Here is more from Sports Illustrated. If you want to look on the bright side after the devastating Aaron Rodgers broken collarbone, Packer Nation, think of this, your team is 4-2 tied for first place in the NFC North with 10 games to play. The Packers are 3-0 at home, and the next five weeks are, relatively speaking, exceedingly kind, New Orleans at home, by, Detroit at home, at Chicago, Baltimore at home. That takes you to Thanksgiving. Conceivably, the Packers can stay in it while Brett Hundley gets some experience and Mike McCarthy game plans to hide the QB's weaknesses. Realistically. Though, no very good team in the NFL is more reliant on its starting quarterback this season than the Packers are on Rodgers. New England could lose Tom Brady and win with Jimmy Garoppolo, the Patriots, briefly, did last year, with Garoppolo and Jacoby Brissett. The Chiefs, I believe, would have a better chance to keep winning with the totally untested Pat Mahomes if Alex Smith went down. Philadelphia has Nick Foles. Atlanta has Matt Schaub. Denver has Brock Osweiler, 5-2 as a Broncos starter. Who makes that final drive in Dallas last week other than Rodgers, the frisky marksman? Who wins the playoff game in Dallas last year? Rodgers' rare combination of elusiveness, running ability and precision is unmatched in football, now and maybe forever. It's devastating, no question, Packers wideout Randall Cobb said. We still have to play football. We have a long season ahead of us to figure out what we are going to do. My opinion, the Packers should call Colin Kaepernick on Monday morning. Not necessarily to sign him. If I were general manager Ted Thompson and coach Mike McCarthy, I'd want to meet with Kaepernick to see if he'd be willing to come in as a backup to Hundley while he took a crash course in the offense. If they're impressed enough with his approach and his conditioning, they could sign him and groom him to be Hundley's backup. And, if Hunley struggles mightily, as he did Sunday at Minnesota, in the next game or two, then McCarthy can judge whether Kaepernick or number 3 quarterback Joe Callahan gives the Packers the best chance to win. With a bye week coming up after Sunday's game against the Saints, that would give the staff 19 days between now and the game after New Orleans to see how much Kaepernick could absorb, and to see if he can be better than Hunley or Callahan. Maybe Kaepernick can be a fit.
maybe he can't. And this grievance Kaepernick filed could complicate things too. I just know that if I were the Packers, I would want to feel very good about my quarterback situation when the rest of my team is a solid playoff contender. Where Rodgers or Kaepernick ends up is anyone's guess, but it seems that any player that wades into this national anthem protest does not end up in the winner's circle. It would be wise for these NFL players to play the game and leave their political beliefs outside the stadium alongside their absurd anthem protest, protest.